Before we begin, click subscribe to stay up to date with all of our newest video content. I'm Rhonda Six, and I'm going to give you a high-level look at Sage HRMS for Human Resources and Payroll. The first thing you will notice if you're a current Abra Suite user is that the HR side of HRMS is primarily the same touch and feel as Abra Suite. The colors may have changed and it's a bit shinier, but you can still navigate in much the same way. Any of the HR customizations you may have made in Abra Suite will flow over to Sage HRMS. For those of you watching this video that are not Abra users, let me quickly review some of the HR features of Sage HRMS. First of all, we have the advanced find that will bring you into a list of employees. Now you can also get there by going to employees and view edit employee, but I like the advanced find. It seems to be a much quicker option. Once you get here, the screen can be personalized and you can narrow or expand your field of information by checking the different boxes. I have mine set to only show active employees at this time. You also have this link for personalizing at the top right. And when you click on that, you can either add or remove columns and you can determine which column you will be sorting by as your standard rule. Now you also have this more options section, which will allow you to narrow your selection even further, either to one of our organization levels or to the supervisor of the employee. Let's just go ahead and drill down into one of these employees and take a look even closer. We're opening up John Baird on the personal section of his record and the first tab that comes up is his demographics. One thing that is noticeable about this is that he now has an alternate email at the bottom of the right column which we have two emails available for each employee as well as a tab for personal information. This is something that has been pretty standard is to see whether they're married and such. And then also an option for a photo. If we were to go on to the HR status section of the personal information, this gives us an opportunity to track more dates than we had available in Abra Suite. Here we have the option of the original hire date and the last hire date. So we never lose that first hire date. We also have an adjusted seniority date that we can put in as well as a time off or a service date for those who have negotiated special seniority for time off accruals. We have sections for employment eligibility and military and union information, as well as a section user defined information. And you'll see several tabs throughout HRMS that gives us this ability to customize HRMS even, even more toward the unique needs of your organization, making it easier to track and report on those unique items. If we go to the job and pay section, if we were to look at current pay, you would see the employee's current pay rate and when it became effective whether or not they are active in payroll, and you would also see their payroll frequency would be established here. You could go to the pay and performance tab that would show you when their next pay review is and when their next performance review should be scheduled. You, again, you have another user defined field, and then we can go look at their current job. Now, current job is nice because we have the ability to actually set up standard information that will come in once we have set up these jobs. So the job title and the job code are what determine all of the information below that section. The EEO job group all the way down to the bottom of that first column as well as the bottom item of the right column, the EEO class, those th items are all in gray, and that's because they are attached to that job in the initial job setup. This keeps your information consistent 
for all of your people of that same job. Anybody who is set up as an engineer too is always going to fall into the EEO job group professionals. And then if we were to go to the organization tab, you have five organization levels that are unique to your organization that can be set up in my sample data. We only are using three of those levels, but the other two can be used and can be added at any time. Now, something that a lot of our clients like is the secondary job. And this looks like it's going to be a summary page for a list of secondary jobs. So an employee could have more than one secondary job. With that job, they would have related pay information. Maybe you have a mechanic who's going to have to go out and do some delivery driving, and he's gonna get a different rate for that. So he's gonna get maybe a premium rate for doing that job. We're gonna have that listed here, and when we put that job in, on his time card, it's going to bring in this related secondary rate. Of course, in NHR, you can also have the benefits for both insurance and savings benefits. You can track your dependents and beneficiaries there. And if you wanted to, you also have the attendance available, which is where we can track attendance transactions. Let's see if John has any available. Typically, that would be a list of transactions with the reasons, a summary for any attendance items, giving us their carryover and what has been accrued, what has taken, and what they have available for each of those items. That brings us to the payroll section. Payroll part of Sage HRMS is significantly different for ABRI users. So I'm going to go into more detail for this part of the demonstration. Under payroll, if we were to go to employee payroll, the first thing that's going to come up is going to be this general tab. And you can see this tab is basically all grayed out, which means that this is all the information that was provided in the HR demographics page. This has come to the payroll section from HR, so there's one point of entry. And you can see also we have a class schedule and a cost center tab. And these tabs essentially take advantage of the organization information that was provided in the job and pay sections of HR. In the payroll module, we use that information to automatically assign the employee's wages to the correct cost centers and GL codes, ensuring that we send the correct charges to the accounting department following the payroll process. The pay tab is where all the earnings, deductions, and other earnings are listed for each employee. We can see the employee's payroll setup at the top of the section, showing that they're bi-weekly, they usually get 80 hours per pay period, and then in the grid below, we see a listing of all the possible earnings and deductions for that particular employee. This is what that employee is eligible for. We also have the tax tab, Every employee will have their own taxes set up. This is where we can go in and set up their W-4 elections and other applicable taxes. If we were to go to the tax info on this US FIT, we could see that John's W-4 selection was single and one. We also have a tab here for EFT, and that's where we can set up the employee's direct deposits. By clicking or unchecking this direct deposit box, that will just very quickly either turn the direct deposits that are set up off. And down here, you can list as many direct deposit options as you will allow your employees to use. We also have this employee activity section. And this section is where we can see what their summary information is. Now, I'm rolling back to June of 2017 because that's where I think I have some data in my sample set. And as you can see, we have some summary information, some quarter to date and year to date information for John on those dates. I can also go to this checks tab and if I put in 2017 and click the go button, it's going to end up giving me a listing of all of the checks in that date range that I have listed. That brings us to payroll processing. Now that we understand our employee, payroll processing in HRMS is much simpler than processing 
in Ebra Suite, pretty intuitive compared to other systems that I have seen. Looking at this process payroll screen, we have a customizable process payroll map that can be set up with your specific steps and reports to provide a very streamlined way of ensuring you have completed every step in the payroll process. Open payroll is the first step in that process. And this is where you're able to marry the HR data to the payroll database by using the open payroll process. The HR staff can continue working in HRMS even if payroll is currently in process and the payroll staff has complete control as to when that information comes over to the payroll side. This may be a good time to mention that the system security can be set to allow anyone to run this process or you can only allow specific people to have the privileges to run this process. The security can be set all the way down to the field level. Another side note is that most of our reports and forms are created using Crystal reports. And so if you do use Crystal reports for something, Crystal does recognize each user's HRMS security access levels and will not pull information that that user is not eligible to see. To give you an idea of what Open Payroll looks like, coming back to our, our point at hand. This is the process where we can process here and we can review those updates. We can go ahead and update. When we do that, that's what brings over all of those HR changes over to payroll based on the, the dates that we select for that process. So the time card list is what some systems refer to as your inner update timesheets. This is where you will make one-time changes to an employee's pay for adjustments and such. And you can enter multiple time cards for an individual employee and even pay them using separate checks if desired. Right here is our check mark that we can use for a separate check. Now, a nice note on this is if you are doing more than one check on a, a payroll and you check this print a separate check box, the item that has the, the checkbox marked is not going to have any of the standard deductions pulled for that check. It's kind of convenient. Once you're satisfied with all of your adjustments and your time is in the time card list, then we want to go to calculate payroll. And calculate payroll is where you're going to run your numbers for your trial payroll you can do this as many times as needed until you know that your numbers are correct and you're ready to go with your final payroll. Once you run based on your pay period, your specific selections, you can run this for an entire group of employees, your entire employee base, or just for one individual employee. And we can do that as many times as needed. The pre-check payroll register is essentially your trial payroll register. This is after you've run your numbers, you want to review them to make sure they're correct. On this report, the nice thing is that you have the ability to see the GL accounts to ensure that the earnings are going to the correct place before you finalize payroll. So if we've been making changes to some employees and we know that that would have affected their GL accounts, we can see that right here on the employee's register. You can also see, see their total deductions, you can see the employee's taxes that have been taken out, and you can see the employer's matches as well as the employer taxes that are listed for each of these employees. So if we're satisfied with that, then we would move forward to print post check. If we're not satisfied with that, then we would go back, we would make corrections either in time cards and recalculate the payroll for those individuals that were not correct and review the pre-check payroll register until we're satisfied and then we go to the print post checks. And this is where you would print both your ACH and EFT advices and paper checks 
Again, just like any of the other reports, you can preview the checks as many times as needed before actually printing on your check stock. You can, the, the check forms are all created in Crystal Reports and are relatively flexible compared to other system requirements for check printing. Payroll register is your final payroll register. And then you would, once you've created your final payroll register, you would go on to create your EFT file. This will create the ACH file to upload to the bank, and it will also provide you with a summary report to review for accuracy and present to your accounting department showing the direct deposit totals for each employee. Once you've completed that, then I've also added the tax calculation analysis report to our process map, which gives me the summaries that I need to pay my taxes following payroll. And that's really all there is to payroll in HRMS. Was this video helpful? Click subscribe to see more videos like this one.